Okay, everyone, from that clickety-clack sound, it's time for TV Oblivion, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Castanis. This is episode nine, season one. Today's date is July 10th, 2022. And today I have a very fun, informative, and enjoyable show coming up. And here is the lineup for today's program. Uh, From the late 1940s, I would talk about the TV game show Juvenile Jury. From the 1950s, the TV sitcom Sally. From the 1960s, the courtroom drama Judd for the Defense. Excuse me, Judd for the Defense. Uh, From the 1970s, the TV sitcom uh, Blansky's Beauties. From the 1980s, uh, the TV crime crime drama, excuse me, O'Hara. Uh, from the 1990s, the TV sitcom Jenny, and from the 2000s, the primetime serial Dirty Sexy Money. Okay, so uh, like I've done in previous episodes, I will explain each show from each decade that there were um, they were first aired, but they're rarely syndicated, and uh, they've been forgotten. But most have, some have forgotten, some have, uh, you know, they just uh, disappeared altogether. Okay. Right now the program will go into a commercial break. And TV Oblivion is brought to you by St. Joseph Aspirin for Children. And here is a commercial from 1974. So sit back and, and relax and just enjoy the commercial and I'll be right back. Thank you, everyone. Fever. When fever of a cold builds up, your child slows down. That's the time many doctors recommend St. Joseph Aspirin for children with the pure orange flavor and the exact children's dosage. It relieves aches, pains, chills, starts reducing fever, often within 30 minutes, so she can rest. It helps your child get back to normal. St. Joseph Aspirin for Children, the one children's doctors recommend most. All right, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for St. Joseph Aspirin for Children. Uh, This product is still made, manufactured, that is, and uh, you can find it at any drugstore everywhere. I remember the commercials very well. Um, they were easy to swallow. Also, it was orange flavor. Um, I don't know if it's still orange flavor. Maybe it is. I remember when I took these when I was little. And uh, so, and I remember the commercials very well. And uh, still, you know, because you have to be careful with children when you, uh, you know, administer aspirin to them because it's low dose. So, you, so it's uh you know it's still uh still a good product and it's still around. Okay. At the big be- so at the beginning of the program I ran down the lineup of today's program. All right. So the first program I will talk about is from 1947, the game show Juvenile Jury. And uh, this sort of has a hit- little uh, interesting history of that. Okay, so um, it first aired on NBC, on the network NBC from April 3rd, 1947 to August 1st, 1954. And it was hosted by Jack Berry, who was famous for, uh, from the 1970s, the syndicated game show, Joker's Wild. Oh, I love that show. That was fun. Yeah, I love that so much. He hosted other um, game shows, and he got involved with the um, quiz show Scandal. And, uh, so yeah, he, he hosted for a while and then, uh, he disappeared after that. And then he just came back, you know, and a lot of people forgot about it, but that's okay. And, uh, he, uh the other shows he hosted was, uh, Tic Tac Doe 21. Do you remember that? Uh, you know, I'm going to talk about that show someday, which would be very, I'll go into more depth of that. Okay. So we'll go back to Juvenile Jury. Uh, The show uh, began as a radio program in 1946, and then it transitioned to television. And then it was was, uh, also a TV show, radio show. 
But uh, the radio show ended a year before of, uh, of the television show in 1953. So um, let's see. So the show was, uh, it was a panel of young children. And uh, they would ask questions to uh, other children, uh, to other children, that is. And uh, there's not many uh, episodes there. Um, you know, they, they've been destroyed. Uh, they found a few, couple of them, and it's on YouTube if you care to look at, uh, to view it yourself. You could do that. And uh, so uh, I, I watched a clip of that, and it was very interesting. Okay, so uh, right now I will play a clip of the, uh, it was an introduction to the juvenile jury. Uh, according to the clip on YouTube, it says it's from 1947. I don't think it is. It's from the 50s. So it's like 53, if I'd be 53 or 54 towards the end of the show. So it's about two minutes of that. So it, there's an introduction and, there, and Jack, the host, Jack Berry, uh, introduces the panel. So you get a general idea what the show is all about. So here is the clip from Juvenile Jury. And especially for growing children, present Jack Barry's Juvenile Jury. Now, here's our host for another spontaneous session of Juvenile Jury, Jack Barry. Thank you very much. Hello again, everyone, and a very cordial welcome to Juvenile Jury, the program where five average youngsters try to solve the problems you folks all across the nation have been nice enough to send to them. I'd like you to meet the kids this week. First of all, there's Lynn Rose Cohen. How old are you, Lynn Rose? I'm seven and a half. Here is Richard Goodall. How old are you, Richard? I was ten years old yesterday. Well, happy birthday to you. Down Thank here in the you. bottom row, Alberta Fitter. How old are you, Alberta? I'm playing six. You're what? Playing six. I see. In the center, Joe Ward. How old are you, Joe? Six. And last but not least, the newcomer to juvenile jury, Michelle Fogel. How old are you, Michelle? Playing four. Thank you. Nice to have you all on juvenile jury. <laughs> Michelle, you're only on the program the first night, and you're starting to ad lib already, eh? Well, once again on juvenile jury, we're going to try to solve the problems you folks at home have sent to us. Each problem which we use on the program will get for the person who has sent it to us a lovely gift of this handsome Underwood Champion portable typewriter. It's the luxury portable with all big machine features. We're sending an Underwood portable to a Mrs. L.H. of Medford, Oregon, for this letter. She writes and says, My five-year-old son wants to be a veterinarian when he grows up, and every time he sees a dog or a cat, he wraps his handkerchief around their paws and tails. He says he has to learn how to put bandages on animals because he wants to take care of them when he gets older. What should I do about this? <laughs> Michelle? The mother um, should throw the dog out and dig a hole in, uh, in the <laughs> snow and throw him in, and then uh, um, and uh, close the hole with the cover and um, and stamp on it, and the dog and they'll have no more dogging. <laughs> What problem are you working on, Michelle? My mother told me to say that. Your mother? <laughs> okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the introduction of Juvenile Jury. Uh, let me recap what the show is all about. I was a little nervous. It featured a panel of children, age 10 or less, giving advice to solve the problems of other children. And uh, it's very humorous. And uh, very enjoyable. They also had uh, get celebrity guests at the time appearing, well, like, for example, Milton Berle, Eddie Cantor, and Red Skelton. I think the one with Red Skelton's on YouTube, if you were interested in looking to that. Um, the show ended in 1954, August 1st. And then it was revived in the syndication, twice, actually. From, 19, from in 1970, and Jack Berry returned to host. Uh, I don't remember the syndicated version. No, not at all. And then uh, it was revived again in 1989, renamed the New Juvenile Jury, and it was hosted by N comedian Nipsey Russell. And uh, 
he hosted that. That was uh, syndicated. And then on the BET network, that's a black entertainment uh, television network, he um, hosted another version in 1983. And that featured a uh, African-American audience and also a panel to do that. And uh, that didn't last very long. No. So uh, I never saw that show as well. Uh, as I said before, uh, the episodes don't survive, so there's a couple at the Paley Center for Media, and uh, and some have been, and a couple of episodes have been released on DVD, but you can watch uh, the uh, the episodes on YouTube if you'd like. So, so that's an interesting show because that's one of the earliest game shows uh, ever aired at the time. Yeah, so that's good. All right. Next show I will talk about from the and this is from the 1950s is the sitcom Sally. I never seen this show. I, I watched an episode of YouTube. I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. And uh, this premiered on NBC again, September 15th, 1957, and uh, last aired March 30th, 1958. And this and the show starred uh, John Call John Caulfield. And uh, she was a, a movie and television actress. And she played, uh, the character's name was Sally Truesdale. And she was a saleswoman at a department store. And she toured with a widow all around Europe, who was the uh, the store's owner. And uh, the owner was played by Marion Lauren, famous for Aunt Clara and Bewitch. Oh, I loved her. She's wonderful. Everything, everything she did was great, and she played the the same character in this sitcom as in Bewitched. She was, uh, you know, scatterbrained and stat- stuttered, <laughs> and then, and, but she she was endearing. She really was, and uh, that was the plot of the first uh, in the first half of the show, and uh, and it didn't it ran about twenty six episodes. Just for one year, and um, the character um, Mary Lauren, Lauren's uh, character's name was Myrtle Banford, and like I said, she owned the uh, department store. And uh, so I'm going to play the introduction of uh, Sally, you know. And uh, they have a weird sponsor. They have about a typewriter, which I never heard of. So uh, maybe I'll do a little research and find out what that's about. So here is the uh, introduction of Sally, uh, the TV show from 1957. Royal McBee, world's largest manufacturer of typewriters and makers of data processing equipment, presents John Caulfield. Marion Lawn. Okay, everyone, I'm back for uh, from this commercial. Excuse me. <laughs> so nervous. So I hope you enjoyed the commercial for uh, Royal McBee. I did a little history, a uh, little research on that. It was from the Royal Typewriter Company. Royal McBee was a subsidiary. The uh, manufactured the earliest computers, you know, like Univac. And I don't know if Univac was part of it, like in the 50s. So uh, uh, believe it or not, royal typewriters are still manufactured. You know, they still make typewriters, as far as I know. But uh, you don't see them everywhere. So if you wanted a typewriter, maybe you could check online. You know, you want to be nostalgic? Help yourself, you know, because I used to, I used to have a typewriter. Uh, mine was a Smith Corona, and I bought it like in the early '80s. And uh, this is the one where it was computerized, so you um, so you place, you know, so you put the paper in, you know, and you roll it with the carriage. But it you would type in, and then once you were done, uh, but also checked for errors, you would print it out. And it's kind of cool, but it makes a lot of noise. And as I remember, <laughs> okay, so back to Sally. Um, 
The second part of the series, uh, once they were done uh, touring Europe, they returned to the uh, department store. And uh, there were two more uh, cast members added. Well, actually three. Uh, There was, uh, (coughs) excuse me, Gil Gordon, who was famous for um, being Mr. Mooney on The Lucy Show. He played Bascom Bleacher Sr., he was a store and is the store manager and part owner. Also, his son Bascom Bleacher Jr. was played by Artie Johnson, famous for his uh, his starring role on Rowan Martin's Laughing. That was one of his earliest uh, TV uh, appearances. And the last um, cast member to join was Johnny Desmond. He was a singer and he played uh, Joan Caulfield's uh, boyfriend. So the show didn't do very well, and uh, but I, like I said before, I watched it, uh, uh, an episode. I liked it very much. It was uh, very interesting. Oh, Mary Lauren was wonderful, and it was canceled. And then, um, according to sources, uh, Joan Caulfield's husband was uh, the he was the um, producer of the series, and I heard they had. Um, conflict they fought all the time and they eventually divorced so that was the end of that and uh so she uh she started in a couple you know a couple more tv series uh and uh let's see so she also did movies as well and uh she passed away on june 18th 1991 she was 69 years old yeah so that was uh a lot of people didn't remember her not really, but uh, if you see old movies, if you're a fan of old movies, you'll see her. You know, so that's fine. And uh, she also uh, starred in the TV version of the radio series My Favorite Husband that starred Lucia Ball on the radio series. So she did the television show, and it was not successful as well. As well. Excuse me. So I'll talk about that show in a later date. Okay. Now... Right now, I'm going to talk about from the 1960s, Judd for the Defense. And that was a courtroom drama. It aired on ABC Network on Friday nights. And it was first aired on September 8th, 1967. Ended uh, March 21st, 1969. It only ran for two seasons, uh, 50 episodes. And uh, the starring role of the show was Carl Betts. And he's famous for... Um, starring in the Donna Reed show for eight seasons. And he was uh, a Dr. Alex Stone, a wonderful actor. He was, you know, he was like Mike Brady of the Brady Bunch. You know, he was uh, calm. Well, he would get mad, but uh, he was a great father figure. So on the show, Carl Betts played Clinton Judd, and he was uh, an attorney and based in Houston. And there was a actor, Stephen Young. He played his assistant, Ben Caldwell. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they, um, they, the show touched a lot of controversial topics. And uh, there was uh, such, for, for example, draft evasion, homosexuality, blacklisting. I don't know if they did abortion. I don't think so. No, no, not yet. If they did, uh, that would be very daring like that. And uh, it was a very good show. And uh, it had a lot of guest stars. Uh, like, for example, I had Ed Asner, Karen Black, uh, Tyne Daly from Cagney and Lacey, Richard Dreyfus. You know, he did a lot of uh, early shows. Also, Ron Howard was on the show. He really was, yeah. And there was uh, also Jessica Tandy. She started in that, so they, they had great, uh, great guest up, guest lineup, you know, for the show. Okay, so right now I'm going to play the uh, introduction of Judd for the defense, and uh, so sit back and enjoy, and I'll be right back. Defense. 
Okay, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the introduction of Judd for the Defense. Uh, I, I've seen this show uh, maybe once or twice. It aired on Nick at Night, the cable channel, in the late 80s, I think. Yeah, late 80s. And uh, I loved it. It was a great show. And uh, it's not on DVD. I wish it was. So that would be great to buy that um, as a, you know, as a for a collection for myself because you know, I'm a collector of TV, uh, TV shows on DVD. And uh, let's see. So uh, Carl Betts, um, I remember him. He also starred in Night Gallery. I think he was the, in the first episode of Night Gallery. And he played a doctor or no, I think he was a doctor. I don't remember. And, uh, you know, he died on January 18th, 1978. So, but he's also, he's famous for... Um, his role as uh, Dr. Alex Stone on the Donna Reed Show, which also aired on Nick at Night. It was one of the first shows that aired. And uh, I never watched Donna Reed when I was growing up. I've heard of it. But I started watching on the network, you know, Nick at Night, and I loved the show. And it's, it's on DVD. But I only have the first five uh, seasons. For some reason, they didn't release uh, six, seven, and eight. Uh, I think it's some rights or something like that, which is a shame. Yeah, because it's a great show. Great show from the late 50s to the 60s. Okay. And uh, so that's uh, hopefully the show, the Jeff for Defense will be released. And just uh, keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. Next up from the 1970s, I have Blansky's Beauties. Oh, <laughs> this show I remember very well. And it's. Uh, it's very uh it wasn't strange well, it's uh it's incre intriguingly strange it's uh you know like you you you're intrigued by the show when you watch it but uh it's uh, but it was a lot of fun i remember watching this when i was about eh, 13 years old when it aired so here's a history of this uh, blasky's beauties uh first aired from february 12th 1977, all the way to June 27th of the same year. And uh, it starred Nancy Walker. And uh, she, she, her character's name was Nancy Blansky. She first appeared on an episode of Happy Days, and she was Howard Cunningham's cousin. Okay, so, and uh, she, that aired, that episode aired the week before it premiered. And, but you got to remember, Happy Days uh, was set in the 50s. and uh, But in Blansky's Beauties, it was set in the present, in you know, 1977. And uh, so she was a, uh, uh, she uh, acted in Las Vegas, and she was a veteran. And, uh, and the plot of the show was she had an ap apartment complex where they all live, and she had uh, a bevy of of show Las Vegas showgirls, and uh, that was the premise of the show. And uh, the cast uh, consisted of uh, Nancy Walker, there was Karen Kay, she was an actress, you saw her all the time on sitcoms from the 70s and 80s. But uh, she was famous for Best of the West, if you remember that show that started with Joel Higgins, and they heard on ABC. And then Joel Higgins went on to, uh, to NBC and starred in Silver Spoons with Ricky Schroeder. And then the other cast members uh, were from, uh, well, one was from Lover and Shirty. It's Eddie Mika, Eddie Mika, uh, Mika, Eddie Mika, yeah. And, uh, and also Scott Bale. Believe it or not, uh, when he, this was his first TV role, I think it was, uh, but... This is before he joined the cast of Happy Days as Chachi, but this is he started in this show first. Also, there was Pat Morita who played Arnold, but it was in the present. So this is Arnold. I don't know how he aged in twenty years, <laughs> but he played the same character. And uh, he also started in a show before that. After he left for Happy Days, he started with Mr. T and Tina. And then he started in this show. And then when it was canceled, he. Uh, I don't know if he returned to Happy Days. Maybe he did, but I think um, uh, Al Molinaro played Al. So, uh, no, I don't think he returned. I think when Al left, 
then Scott Bale returned. So, you know, it's kind of crazy like that. They also had a dog on the show. His name was Black Jack. He was he's shown in the credits. Okay. So I'm going to play the theme song for Blansky's Beauties, and I'll come back with some more trivia. Okay, so here is the theme song. Sit back and enjoy. I'm Sunshine Aquilino, and I'm a little dipsy. I'm Hillary Prentice, and I'm definitely not dipsy. I'm Arkansas based, and I don't even know what dipsy means. I'm Bambi Benton, and I know what everything means. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the theme song for uh, Blansky's Beauties. Uh, the show didn't do very well, and it only aired 13 episodes. Was another uh, two guest stars were on the show. Well, before I get to the guest stars, I forgot somebody else. Uh, there was a character, her name was Sunshine, and she was a Las Vegas showgirl, and that was played by Linda Goodfriend, and she's best known as Laurie Beth, as Richie Cunningham's girlfriend, then her, then eventually became his wife on Happy Days. And uh, uh, Eddie Mika's character, his name was Joey DeLuca, but he was uh, like a, a younger cousin of uh, Carmine Ragusa, the big ragu on Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> and uh, uh, two, uh, two people from Happy Days... And Laverne and Shirley, one was uh, Pinky Tuscadero, played by Roz Kelly. Remember her? She played Fonzie's girlfriend. And uh, she was on the show. Uh, the only thing different is that she changed her hair to the 70s from the 50s, but she looked the same. <laughs> I mean, it's the magic of television. That's how it is. And also, uh, Penny Marshall started in the show. And... Uh, and the, uh, because Nancy Walker's character uh, um, explained that she uh, had her, she was uh, auditioning. Um, I mean, Laverne was auditioning for the show, and uh, I wish I I remember watching this. I remember watching that episode. I wish it was on DVD. That'd be great, but uh, I don't see that. Ha I don't see that happening. <laughs> you know. But uh, anyway. Uh, Nancy Walker was a wonderful actress, funny lady. I loved her in uh, Rhoda as Ida Morgenstern. Oh, my God. My mother has a friend just like her. I love her to death, but she interferes. <laughs> she, she just, and uh, bossy, too. Oof. You know, but that's, uh, that's how Nancy Walker's character was. She was great. She was also a McMillan wife as Mildred, the maid. And she's also famous for her uh, commercials for bounty towels, you know, paper towels, you know, as Rosie. Oh, I love watching those. So that's another uh, TV show that went to oblivion. It was gone. I don't. I don't know if anyone remembers it now. Okay. Next up, we have from the 1980s. It's the police drama O'Hara, starring Pat Morita. We're back to Pat Morita again. Oh, he's a wonderful actor. I loved him. I loved him in Karate Kid. He was, uh, you know, he played very serious roles. But he actually he's a comedian, you know, and uh, he's a funny guy. He was a funny guy. So 
the show uh, premiered January 17th, 1987, and ended on May 7th, 1988. Also ran for two seasons, 30 episodes. And uh, I remember it aired on Saturday nights. I remember this show. It was, I loved it. It was a good show. And it, the, the premise was uh, he was a police lieutenant. Uh, and he used uh, spiritual methods like method and meditation in his uh, shrine at home to solve crimes. And he never used a gun. And uh, But he used martial arts. He did that. And uh, let's see. So um, the main cast, well, there was like, turn. there was the main cast. So we had Pat Morita. He was Lieutenant O'Hara. His first name was never revealed. And uh, in the first season, there was uh, actor Kevin Conroy. He played Captain Lloyd Hamilton. He was only there for seven episodes. He's famous for the voice of Batman, the anime series, if you will, his voice. And uh, I remember on Dynasty, he started that. And after that, uh, there was John Polito. He played Captain Ross. Uh, and uh, he's famous for Homicide, Life in the Streets, if you remember that show. There was also Madge Sinclair. She starred in season one. She's famous for her role in Trapper John M.D. You know, she's a nurse. And uh, there was also Megan Fay. She played Roxy. I remember her. She's from Chicago. She's an actress. I remember her role on Roseanne. She played that uppity neighbor. (laughs) And uh, Roseanne didn't I hated her so much because, and then she called her Needle Butt. <laughs> I love that episode; it's funny. And also on season two, there was a uh, Rachel Tincanton. I think that's how you say Tincanton or Tincon Tincanton. Uh, she was a movie actress, and uh, she started in a lot of movies. And uh, also, uh, she she was in season two, so she played a U.S. attorney. And uh, some guest stars in the show were, uh, believe it or not, uh, Brandon Lee, son of Bruce Lee. He uh, he was in this in season two. Uh, I didn't. See, I wish I'd seen that. So, right now I'm going to play the introduction of O'Hara, and it's a uh, it's a good uh, theme song. So here we go. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the introduction of O'Hara. Uh, I forgot to mention one other supporting cast member. It was Robert Clohesse. He uh, he was in. He played Lieutenant George Shaver. He was in season two, and uh, he's famous for his role in the prison drama Oz. If you watch that show, uh, Pepperito, and uh, he was uh, famous for. Uh, uh, Mr. Miyagi from the Karate Kid uh, film series. Uh, I've seen Karate Kid a couple of times, but then they kept, uh, you know, doing the sequels and all. Then now they have a TV show based on that, you know, with uh, Ralph Macchio. I never seen the the show because it was on cable. So um, I don't know. A lot of people loved the movie. I, I liked it, but I'm not crazy about it. You know, it was okay. You know, but uh, that was fine with that so um unfortunately he passed away on november 24th 2005 so you know but he was a very uh funny man you know so uh 
His role will live on forever in the Karate Kid uh, series. Also on Happy Days as Arnold. <laughs> By the way, his real name, uh, 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 Arnold's character's real name was Matsuo Taka Takahashi. <laughs> I like that. You know, I remember him from Sanford Son. He played Ah Chu, and uh, Red Fox always gave him trouble. <laughs> okay, so okay, that's it for O'Hara. Right now, I'm going to talk about the 19, uh, 1997 sitcom Jenny. We're going to the 1990s, and that starred Jenny McCarthy, and uh, that aired from September 28, 1997. Uh, and uh, it ended January 12, 1998. Uh, they only had 17 episodes, but only seven aired. Uh, Ratings-wise, it's uh, bombed. It didn't uh, do very well. And the the plot, the premise of the show was uh, Jenny McCarthy played Jenny McMillan. She was a, a convenience store clerk from Utica, New York, and she inherits a fortune from her. Uh, father and he was a movie star and she she never knew him and once he passed away um she uh her and her friend maggie played by heather page Kent, decided to move to hollywood and uh the rest of the cast of the characters uh we have is george hamilton he played her father he was guy hathaway there was a uh, dale Dale Gaboldo, his name was Cooper, and uh, Rafael Rafer Weigel as Max. Oh, I'll get into I'll get to him in a second. And then uh, also Carolyn Hennessy as Chase Gardner. Now the show aired on Sunday nights. It didn't do very well, so that's probably why. And uh, I remember the promos, you know, and uh, because Jenny McCarthy starred on the MTV series, if you remember that. And uh, so I'm going to play the theme song of Jenny. So, uh, so here we go. A new beginning and we're starting again. Look straight ahead and don't look back where we've been. I say hello again, my friend. If we jump, we can fly away. Run the tracks on the back when you hear me say. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the theme song for Jenny. Um, you know, Jenny McCarthy, um, I don't see her much acting uh, much now. So um, you do remember her uh, for that game show Single Out that aired from 1995 to 1997. She did some acting in some movies. And uh, she lives in Chicago, outside of Chicago. Okay, and... Uh, Let's see. So uh, her cousin is Melissa McCarthy, you know, the the actress. And uh, she's now married to Donnie Wahlberg. You know, they've been married uh, for about hmm, eight years now. You know, first she was married to John Asher. And, uh, you know, her his father was William Asher, the uh, producer, I think the producer and di director of Bewitch was married to Elizabeth Montgomery. So, uh, so let's see. So uh, you, I've seen her on Channel 9 on the news one day, and she still looks the same. She still looks gorgeous. You know, she's a South Sider, so like me. So uh, hopefully, you know, when I post this on social media, I hope she uh, knows that I'm talking about this show. <laughs> I don't know if she had memories, good memories of the show. I have no idea. I know. Also, the uh, co-starring role was uh, was Rafer Weigel, and uh, he was a uh, he was an actor. Then he became a news anchor, and uh, he did uh, I think he did the sports for WLS TV, I believe. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Then he then he got a job in St. Louis, and he did the anchor job for a long time, and then he returned to Channel Thirty Two in Chicago, and then uh, then. Uh, then he stopped working there. And uh, so 
I talked to him on social media, uh, on Facebook and Twitter. He's a very nice guy. And uh, before uh, yesterday, he says, uh, he mentioned that he had a wonderful experience working on the show, which I'm surprised. And uh, so I told him, yeah, I'm going to do a podcast on TV Oblivion. I hope he's listening, you know. So that'd be great, you know, if he was that. And I talk about, uh, I'm sure he had, like I said before, he probably had good memories of that. And uh, it was fun for me to, to explain the show. And I do remember, I remember one, like, promo that, uh, I know Jenny was, like, somewhere and he fell on the floor. <laughs> I thought it was funny, you know, like that. But it's a shame. So it's another uh, TV show that went into oblivion. Gone. Okay. And the last show I'm going to talk about now from the 2000s is Dirty Sexy Money. And uh, maybe some people remember this show. And uh, so it first aired on ABC from September 26, 2007, excuse me, to August 8, 2009. Ran for two seasons, only 23 episodes. Well, that's very short. It had a good cast. You know, very, uh, very good cast indeed. Uh, I star Peter Krause. I think that's how you say his name. I think he's from Sports Night. I remember that show. Also starred Donald Sutherland. Oh, wonderful man. I love them. Uh, Jill Clayburgh. William Baldwin. Um, there was uh, The rest of the cast was uh, Natalie Zia, Glenn Fitzgerald. Also Seth, Seth Gable, who was married to Bryce Howard, Ron Howard's daughter. And uh, there was also uh, the the couple of more cast members was Lucy, Lucy Liu and Blair Underwood. So uh, this, the plot of the show was uh, Peter Krause's character uh, was a lawyer. His name was Nick George. When his father mysteriously dies in a plane crash, he agrees to take the position as the family's lawyer, which is the Darling family. And uh, he was so it was mysterious, so it, it could have been the uh, it was uh, premeditated. It was he was murdered, his father was murdered. So the Darlings were one of the richest families in New York. And uh, as typical as soap opera, primetime soaps, there was always there was always skeletons in the closet, strange going ons, so and secrets like that. Okay. So uh, right now I'm going to play the theme song for Dirty Sexy Money, and I'll be back for more trivia. Thank you. Okay, everyone, I am back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the introduction for Dirty Sexy Money. Um, didn't do well in the ratings, uh, so uh, I don't want to give the whole plot so, of the show. So The show is available on DVD if you can find it. It's been out of print for a while. Maybe you can check eBay or any uh, website that, show, uh, that has uh, old TV shows uh, you know, on sale. You like that, and uh, but it aired in when it aired in internationally, like in Australia, Europe, it, it was very dude, it did very well, indeed. You know, and uh, I remember the promos from the show all the time, they showed it all the time on the air. It was just a soap opera, you know. We need we need another primetime soap to yell it like Dynasty to get our attention, like that, but no. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, that's it for uh, today's program. I will do a recap right now of what I discussed. Uh, from the 1940s, I talked about Juvenile Jury. 1950s, uh, the TV sitcom Sally. 1960s, the courtroom drama, drama excuse me, Judd for the Defense. Also from the 1970s, uh, the sitcom Blansky's Beauties. In the 1980s. Uh, the crime drama O'Hara from the 1990s. I talked about the sitcom, uh, TV sitcom, that is, uh, Jenny. And also from 2030 Sexy Money. 
once I publish this uh, episode, you can find it on any podcast uh, app that's available. Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Also, it'll be on my YouTube channel, which will be uh, To Be Oblivion. If you check it out, you can listen there. Also, this will be posted on my social media accounts, Facebook and Twitter. And uh, also check out on my other podcast, Van Chicago Land Stories. Uh, I did that one yesterday. I don't know if I don't know when I'll do another one. Uh, sometime this week, I guess. As for TV Oblivion, probably next weekend. That'll be episode ten. We we'll got some more TV shows uh, that have been unearthed, <laughs> and I'll bring it back to life to discuss it. Okay, so. This is Pika Stanis, your host for TV Oblivion, the podcast, and thank you again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the show. I enjoyed talking, and uh, so I'll see you next time. And here is the ending theme song for TV Oblivion, which is Pick and Pluck, and uh, hope to hear from you soon, everyone. Thank you, and take care.